Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started... Our listener support campaign continues, and you can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. Among the thank you gifts we do have available, for any donation of $50 or more, we will send you your choice of the BBC Radio 4 audio dramas of uh, Poirot. And with a donation of $100 or more, we'll send you your choice of three of them. And also at the $100 level for listeners in the U.S. and Canada, uh, I'll gladly send you a copy of the Who is Johnny Dollar Matter? Volume 1, Volume 2, or Volume 3. So one of those three volumes, with Volume 2 covering the Bailey era, Volume 1, the pre-Bailey era, and Volume 3, the post-Bailey era. I'll also send all three for a donation of $250 or more. You can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. You can also mail in a check to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And when you do send in a donation by mail, please include an email address. And also, if you would... uh, like to receive uh, a physical item such as a book or DVD, uh, please include that uh, address as well to make sure we can get that to you. All right, well, now it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, originally broadcast on my dad's birthday uh, from October 27th of 1957, The Three Sisters Matter. And Johnny Dollar. Earl Foreman, Johnny. Oh, hi, Earl. How are things down in sunny Florida? I don't know. You what? I'm calling from Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. What under the sun are you doing out there? Fishing trip? Hardly. Because if it is, I'll join you. I want you to join me, all right, but no fishing. I got a problem, Johnny. One of my important clients has disappeared. Ah, I see. Okay, Earl, I'll grab the next plane. Bob Bailey. In the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company Attention Earl Foreman. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Three Sisters matter. Expense account item one, $151.80, transportation to New York, then airfare and incidentals to Colorado Springs. Earl met me at Peterson Field, the municipal airport. I'm glad to see you, Johnny. All right. Toss in your bags and pop in. Okay, sure. Huh. And where's this Green Mountain Falls you call from? A little place about 12, 13 miles east of here. Uh, I'm staying at the Lucky Four Ranch. One of the last places Rolinov was seen. Rolinov? Uh, Misha Rolinov, the concert pianist. Oh, no. Oh, sure. Yeah, I've heard of him. He has a little place up on the mountain just back of the Lucky Four where he and his daughters live when he's not on concert. Daughters? How many? Olga, Maria, Ada. Now, here's what happened. Rolinov and the girls, well, they're really stepdaughters, by the way. Oh, where's the mother? She died some years back. Well, anyhow, they arrived up here about ten days ago, right after his last concert swing over in Europe. What does he do when he's up here? He and the girls just low. Oh, he has a piano in his cottage to keep him practice, that's all. And now you say he's disappeared. You see, Johnny, he was fond of taking long walks. This is pretty good hiking country. Oh, I can see that all right if you're part mountain goat. Yeah. Well, anyhow, three days ago, right after breakfast, he started out on his usual morning walk. He stopped in for a second cup of coffee with Ray Schmishney and his wife. Who are they? Uh, Ray and Glee has run the lucky four. Oh, yeah. Well, go on. Well, uh, that's all. That was the last time Rolinov was seen. Well, has any kind of a search been made? 
Yes, and that's not easy terrain to search. There's been quite a bit of snow, too, enough to cover up any tracks he might have made. All right. Do you know of any reason he might have wanted to disappear? No, I don't think so. I, I knew him very well, Johnny. I've known him for years. Of course, he uh, occasionally got he fed up with having three girls around his neck all oh, the time. Silly man. Well, that's who wouldn't, but he loved nope. him, I'm sure. Especially Ada, the youngest. She's a brilliant pianist. Hey, Earl, tell me, uh, how did the girls feel about him? Really feel about him? Oh, no, just a minute. Well, you said yourself they aren't his own blood. Well, just wait till you meet them and decide for yourself. Yeah, Earl, I will. The Lucky Four was on a level spot on the side of a mountain. It consisted of half a dozen neat, modern, comfortable cottages... And from the front window of the one we shared was a beautiful view of Pike's Peak. Huh? Oh, come in, Ray. Come in. You see us come up the drive? I want you to meet the man I've been telling you about. Ray Smishney, this is Johnny Dollar. Hi, Ray. Johnny. Only, I'm afraid he got here too late, Earl. Oh? Well, what do you mean? Well, just a few minutes ago before you got back here in a gully up on the West Meadow, way up where I dumped the trash, you know what I mean? Yes. Remember the bear cave I pointed out to you one day when you went up there with me in the jeep? You mean that bear got well enough? No, but that's where I found it. Well enough? Dead, Earl. Dead? A bullet hole in the back of his head. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Question. Was Misha Romanoff the eminent concert pianist murdered? Or was he shot accidentally up near the bear cave on the mountain back of the Lucky Four Ranch at Green Mountain Falls, Colorado? We went up there and raised Jeep. A careful inspection of the body and the gully in which he found it revealed nothing by way of clues to the river. One thing, Johnny. Yeah, what's that, Ray? Like I told Earl here, I was planning to shoot that bear myself. Yeah. Uh, Letting him get nice and fat on the garbage from the ranch. So what? What's that? Guy? He used to come down every day, regular as clockwork, and tip over the pails and gorge himself. Well, what are you trying to it's say? It's been over a week now since I've seen him. Well, I don't see what you're getting at, Ray. Well, it could mean only one thing, Earl. Somebody else got to that bear before I could. And it must have been some time before Rolandos disappeared. That's right. So his being killed here couldn't have been accidental by somebody gunning for that bear. Look here, Johnny. This cartridge case I picked up. Oh, let's see. Yes. 257 Robert. Where'd you find it? Behind that tree there down the slope. You know anybody around here who shoots a 257 Robert? All the hunters in these parts use a 30 six or a 270 or a 3030. Only 257, I've it. Well, what's the matter, Ray? You look sick. Yeah. There's a 257 up in the Rollinoff cottage. And one of the girls. She's a pretty good shot. Ray, you know what you're saying. Which one, Ray? Olga? Maria? Ada? No. No, I won't do it, Johnny. I, I won't accuse you. Look, look, this is no guessing game. This is murder. No, Johnny, I can't believe it. Not one of them. Besides, I... Look, I, I gotta drive into Colorado Springs, notify the coroner and the police. But if you know something that'll help us... No! Mr. No, Johnny, because if I was wrong, I'd never forgive myself. Don't you understand? Oh, all right. Earl, do you know the way up to the Rollinoff place? Yes, Johnny. The road all right for my car, Ray? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Then let's go. <laughs> Take it easy, Earl. This road isn't much wider than the car. I know it. Rolling off cottage is right up in that clearing, middle of that big meadow. You know those daughters, stepdaughters. You figure which one of them might have wanted to kill Rolling off? Oh, no, Johnny. No. Well, who's the beneficiary of this policy? Well, it's a very unusual policy. Now, what do you mean, unusual? There's no beneficiary specifically named. What? The beneficiary or beneficiaries are to be the same as the heirs that are specified in Rolinov's will. Well, who? Nobody knows. Well, where is his will? Same answer. Well, now, look here. He always made it very clear that his will would show up at the proper time. I assume, of course, that his stepdaughters will be his heirs. Oh, but if they're not... Oh, this is the Rolinov cottage. Well... Oh. 
Quite a lot of cottage. And just as nice on the inside as it is on the outside. <laughs> Rolanov used to complain now and then about some of the feminine frippery all around him. But, well, he liked it. And you're sure they all got along well together? Well, of course, every family has a little spat once in a while. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, now listen to me. Oh, well, we shall see what we shall see. I know that after what Ray said, the evidence kind of seems to point to one or all of them, but, well... Yes? Oh, hello. To say the girl who stepped through that door was beautiful would be the understatement of the week. Tall and striking, dressed in something that looked like Schiaparelli or Christian Dior. As though she'd just stepped out of Charles of the Ritz. And if her two sisters were anything like this. Hmm. Johnny, I said this is the older sister, Olga Rolanov. Johnny? Hmm. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Johnny. Hi. Daydreaming? Yeah, I guess so. Well, you're the investigator Earl told us about. Come in, won't you? Sure, thanks. Have you found out anything about Daddy? Olga, that's what uh, we... No. Have. No, Olga, we haven't. Oh, dear, it's such a terrible... Oh, thing. wait a minute, Johnny. Oh. You wait. Ada, we have guests. Oh? Hello, Earl. Oh, hello, Ada. And this good-looking man is Johnny Dollar. Hi. Hello. Well, that's a nice, warm welcome. Ada, why don't you go in and fix your hair? You look a fright. That plain old house there, really. What's that you're playing, Ada? It's the last thing Daddy wrote. He wrote it frantically the morning he... It was almost as though he knew something was going to happen to him. Oh, come now. And he had to write it before it did happen. Oh. Where were you, Ada, the morning he left? Right here, Johnny. Playing this for the first time. Ever since he's disappeared, I've been trying to figure that had some special meaning. Oh, Ada, that's such a silly idea. Is it? What did you mean by that, Olga? Oh, it's really... Well, it's like a lot of other silly ideas she gets over her music. Yeah, like what? A lot of things. As though she should be the concert artist in the family instead of Daddy. Maybe now that he's gone, I will be. I'll be greater than he ever was. Oh, sure. And, and I'll do it in memory of him. You'll do it for your own self-glorification. I'm sorry, sir. That's all right. Incidentally, where were you that morning, Olga? In Colorado Springs. I went shopping right after breakfast. <laughs> or rather, window shopping. Oh. I need some new things so badly. And... Well, you know, I have to keep up with the styles or I'd look like our poor little artist here. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, where was your other sister, Maria? I don't know. Oh, Ada, stop that. When I left the house, she and Ada were doing the dishes. Well, you weren't helping. I told you, Johnny, I had to go into the spring. Oh, yeah. Where is she now? Oh, Maria's probably out in the hills somewhere, camping all Maria's over. Maria's right here, Olga. Hello, Earl. Well. Oh, come in, dear. This is Johnny Dollar, the investigator Earl said that you were getting. Yes. So I see. Well, investigator. I saw it too. And I didn't like what I saw. Maria was dressed in khaki shirt, breeches, and hunting boots. And hanging in the crook of her arm was a high powered hunting rifle. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the three sisters matter. How about aiming that rifle the other way, Marie? Oh, sure. I'll set it down the corner. It's empty, needless to say. Uh, better let me see it, huh? I told you, it's empty. Are you a hunter, too, Johnny? Talk as if you were, dear. Are you, Maria? Do you do a lot of shooting? Shooting, yes. Killing. Oh, Stamping God. around these mountains, blazing away at anything that moves just for the sake of... <laughs> How about that, Maria? Oh, it gives me something to do. Kind of a relief. What else is there to do in this godforsaken place? Have you any other guns? A little 22 that I use for plinking. We all use it. Why? I want to see that one you put in the corner, Maria. Sure. And please don't start waving it around the way you did. Here you are. 
Why are you so interested in it? Oh, I... Hmm. Pretty hot sick. That's right. Johnny. And your only other one is a 22. That's right. Why? That's no 22 up there over the mantel. That's Daddy, Johnny. No, he just said it. Oh? Get it down for me, Maria. Why? Why all these questions, Johnny? Better tell them, Johnny. Yeah, I guess. Tell us what? We... We found your father's... What? What? Johnny. Johnny, you can't mean that. I'm sorry. He was shot. By a high-powered rifle. <laughs> Where? Where is he? What this is terrible, Johnny. Tell me. What are you crying for, Olga? I suppose you're glad, Maria. Because now you can do what you please. No more of those boring concert trips all over the world. No more of this God-forsaken place, as you call it. All right, I listen, suppose Maria. you're glad, because now you'll have money. Fancy clothes. Europe. The Riviera. South America. Men. Men. Stop! Stop talking like that. Why? Because it's true. No, because it's... Ada, for heaven's sake, stop saying that thing over and over and over. What are you trying to do? Drive us out of our minds? No, I'm trying to find out why Daddy wrote it. What compulsion made him feel he had to write it before he left that morning? Hey, wait a minute. Well, all I have to say... Wait, I said. What is it, John? Ada, get back to that piano. What? Sit down. Play that thing again. Now play it. Slowly. Stop. Johnny, what under the sun are you doing? Listen, Earl, the notes on a piano run from A to G like this. Don't you see? The first three notes of that thing she's been playing are A-D-A. Listen. A-D-A. Ada? Yes. Daddy wrote it as a message to me. Oh, now, wait a minute. The rest of it now, quickly. D-E-F-A-C-E. Deface. E G G G edge C A G E cage C E D bed Ada the face edge cage bed the canary cage right and that's exactly what I'm going to do tear out the base of that cage first will somebody please tell me what this is all about hey look here look it has a false bottom. Yes, look what's in it. It's hidden there. Yeah. Last will and testament of Misha Romanoff. Johnny. What? Oh. What does it say, Johnny? That note with it. Daddy's handwriting. What? Well, it looks like Romanoff put the finger on his killer. Johnny. Johnny, what does it say? And my reason for deliberately omitting her from my will. Omitting home from his will? What are you talking about? Read on, John. Let me see. It's not only because of the self-centered life she's always led. Mm-hmm. Not only because of her constant, completely selfish extravagance. I'm afraid that could apply to all of it. An extravagance which finally led her to forging my name on checks. Oh, Ooh, Johnny. Then when I discovered that she was sneaking out and practicing with the old rifle that's kept over the map. The two fifty seven. It was kept over the mantle. Don't move. Oh, the no, put it down. All right. So he cut me out of his will. And if I can't have what I wanted, you won't have it either. Now look here, I'll go. The gun holds five shots. I know because I reloaded after I killed him. Olga. And now you all know that I killed him. All right. One shot is for you, Maria. One is for Ada. One is for you, Earl, and one for Johnny. Olga, listen. And that leaves one for me. So that when I finish, no one will ever know. Olga, you're out of your mind. Maybe so. What difference does that make now? Because now there's no other way out for me. There's nothing else I can't stand still. It's all of it. No. No. It's empty. It's empty. It's a devil. Maria's gun, not for you, Olga. Leave me alone. You'll Oh. Thank God somebody emptied the bullets out of that gun. Yeah. Maria? Yes, son. Ada and I, we didn't want to believe it. We tried not to, but 
I guess we knew that when Daddy disappeared, she must have somehow... Somehow... That something like this might happen. And she did kill him. And she did. Oh, Johnny! <laughs> Why? Why? What kind of a wine could be so twisted? Expense account total, including fare back to Hartford, three fifty one twenty. Remarks? None. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment to tell you about next week's story. Star, to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a beautiful girl, a model, in fact. And, unfortunately, a model crime to go with her. Join us, won't you? And welcome back. Uh, this is an episode that really did suffer from uh, length restrictions. I think you had the makings of a good uh, dramatic tent, uh, comparison between these three uh, characters. And uh, you didn't have time to, to do it right, I don't think, particularly with Johnny uh, coming in. The final clue was certainly uh, clever, and my hat's off to the writers. It's tough, I think, to come up with a really good, convincing message if you can only use the uh, letters A through G. Though, I guess that combination does have the benefit of having two vowels thrown in. And the one thing always about a story like this that always makes me wonder is this guy was clever enough to find an extremely ingenious way to hide his will, and then an extremely ingenious and intricate way to reveal where that was hidden, yet unable to avoid being killed, even though he knew who was going to do it, and even the weapon that they were going to use. I don't know, if I was that clever, I would probably apply my cleverness in that direction. But I'm not a musical genius, so... All right, well, on to some listener comments and feedback. Bobby uh, Lee writes in, Hey, Adam, I've noticed that music at the end of the episode is longer sometimes than others. Were they trying to fill time? Um, in answer to the question, yes. Uh, sometimes this would be used um, longer... Um, music would be used uh, so that uh, they could fill in public service announcements later. Uh, but also, they did need to get to, uh, over the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, they did need to have the shows be a certain length so that they would fit very neatly into the schedule. So often, music would be used to pad it out. And we can hear that with multiple shows. And indeed, that's where the theme music uh, came from, was some Armed Forces Radio uh, service music at the end of Pat Novak for Hire. So it's all about making that fit. And then just some general praise for uh, Johnny Dollar. Uh, Diane uh, says Johnny Dollar is my favorite. And Kathy uh, concurs and says especially with Bob Bailey. Well, thank you so much for your comments and your support. And I appreciate everyone on Facebook. If you're not one of our friends on Facebook, uh, and you have a Facebook account, I do encourage you to like the page at facebook.com slash radiodetectives. As of this recording, we are just about 50 likes away from 4,000. So uh, I encourage you to like the show. And if you uh, have liked the uh, page already, share it with your friends and help us uh, reach that 4,000 mark. Uh, you can also support the show at support.greatdetectives.net and uh, the mailing address, uh, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. 
And among the thank you gifts we do have available is your choice of any Nero Wolf novel or a Agatha Christie novel that is available through audible.com as an audiobook. Uh, we will send that on your request with a donation of $100 or more. Full list of available items, support.greatdetectives.net. Well, that will do it for today. We will see you tomorrow with Dragnet. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook.